Greetings everyone. Let's move ahead on this audio amplifier build. Uh, what am I calling this? The uh, discrete audio amplifier design and build project. Apologize for not having a video up in a while. I went on vacation and I'm pretty busy with work. But I digress. Let's uh, talk about our improvement of our input stage. So I did two videos so far and because of the length of the videos I had to break it out longer than I expected to so this is the third video of the input stage I think we're on the fifth video of the amplifier so I started out saying that I was going to use a differential input stage because they have very good performance and they're used most of the time because of that started out with a very simple circuit and then made improvements to it. I added a, um, a constant current source right here. Then I added emitter degeneration resistors here. That really improved the linearity of the circuit, but it took away some gain. So I need to improve the gain. So the next video we looked at a current mirror circuit and kind of explained how that worked. Two of the same type transistors especially if you match them you know current going into one same current going into the other so you essentially copy the current in one side over to the other and I added emitter degeneration to improve the performance there so now I'm going to integrate this circuit into our differential stage over here they will essentially replace these resistors and that should give us a lot of our gain. Now because our current mirror is going to be on the top side, on the positive side of the circuit, we have to kind of flip this circuit over. So I need to use PNP type transistors because the emitters will be up here in the positive side and the uh, degeneration resistors will be up there as well. So it's the same circuit just flipped in polarity. Of course it won't have this resistor or this LED. We're just using the current mirror circuit itself. These were just part of the demonstration. Before I move ahead here I'm going to retest the uh, differential gain stages I had it set up. and You can go back to the other video and catch it but I want to uh, measure the gain and take a look at the distortion and that will give me a baseline for when I add the current mirror to it and retake the uh, gain and distortion measurements and see how those have changed. Okay, so I got everything hooked up and of course the scope's hooked up to output A. Since this amplifier circuit's only using one side of the amplifier's output, you know, it has the output A and output B and we're just taking the signal off of output A so the scope's connected to the signal ground and the other side to output A, which is uh, single-ended mode. I have the output set to 3 volts even. And of course that's RMS. So let's measure what the input signal is. Move over to the input. And of course I'll have to turn that up. So to get 3 volts out, I have to put 173 millivolts in, or 0.173 volts. And I'll punch that up on the calculator real quick. So it has a gain of 17.34. Uh, so notate that. And now we'll look at the distortion. Okay, so now let's take a look at distortion and make a note of that. So what I had to do is I had to get as much waveform on the screen as I could here. You know, if I had it set at this level here, 2 volts per division, yeah, I couldn't turn it up high enough because it would hit clipping. So I dropped the voltage back to 2.77 and I adjusted it as high as I could go so I could get look at the distortion. So again this is the 1 kilohertz fundamental 
1% pilot signal and you can see really the only significant distortion this is making is a third harmonic and I want to say that's about 0.7 percent when you see odd order harmonics that tells me the distortion is symmetrical across the uh, positive and negative half so the distortion in the positive half is the same as the distortion in the negative half when you see non-symmetrical distortion like you'll have a fatter top and a narrow bottom or vice versa that will be an even order type distortion but yeah we have uh, symmetrical distortion so we're seeing the uh, odd order harmonics there is a little blip of a fifth and well that's not really consistent enough maybe yeah maybe a seventh but the way the distortion peaks mathematically add to give you a total value you can pretty much ignore these and just call this you know it's about 0.7 percent so at 2.77 volts we're looking at 0.7 percent so what I'll do now is integrate the current mirror circuit into our input stage and uh, take some more measurements and see what happens with this circuit okay so I've integrated the current mirror circuit onto the breadboard it's sitting right here the two degeneration resistors I actually drew the circuit out now as you remember I said the current mirror is going to be at the top so it's kind of flipped so we're using PNP transistors and of course the emitter degeneration resistors are at the top so how does the current mirror circuit increase the gain well if you remember looking at this differential amp here when the current in one side goes up current on the other side falls and vice versa so if you put a sine wave in you know, the current's going to seesaw like this well if you have this current seesawing like this but we have a current mirror over here but you can see by tying the base to collector the transistors in diode mode this is the controlling transistor this is the driven transistor so it's going to want to copy what's happening in this side over to this side but that brings up something interesting because we had the current seesawing like this so if the current tries to fall on this side it was trying to rise over here and it's being copied over here so the current's rising wants to rise in this transistor so it wants to do this but you have to think in terms of current and impedance you know we're dealing with pretty high impedance because it's a current source and if you use mathematics to translate that into a voltage you have a very large voltage swing in other words we have a very large amount of gain because of what's happening here well, let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope okay well things look fine and dandy or not look, looks like it's a bit distorted doesn't it heavy uh, second order it looks like uh, if I turn that up and it's already clipping that's one reason it might have been starting to clip tune that back yeah it looks a lot cleaner out of clipping but turn it down around two volts and it's already into clipping that's no good I'm going to try to increase the uh, emitter degeneration values on the current mirror side. You know, they were 100 ohms before. I'm going to, uh, I'll just grab some 470s and see how that performs. Okay, so I replaced those resistors. The gain's even higher now. That's interesting. I didn't change the level. See, that's at the clipping point. You can see we're getting. Uh, almost four volts now before it starts to clip so let's measure the gain uh, let's set the amp for three volts like we did before and I'll move over to the input okay so we're at the limit here very noisy signal see if I can't clean that up uh, let's see, filter, uh, turn the filter on, 
See, that's a lot better. Still jittery. Now I have the uh, trigger up here. And if I turn the filter off, that's because it's still in the trigger range. Apparently it triggers on the original signal and not the cleaned or the filtered signal. So if I put the trigger down here, it's a little too jittery. It's still jumping around, but we can read the voltage about 1.7 millivolts. So if I take 3 divided by 0 0.0017 the gain is 1765 now. So yeah, this has a lot of gain. So looking at the distortion here, this is our 1% pilot signal. So we'll have about two... It's running around a little under 4%. Yeah, about 3.5% distortion. Now you might be asking, didn't you say that we want to have the current mirror in the circuit to improve the linearity. Well, we added a ton of gain and we added some distortion. The entire amplifier circuit, when it's finished, we want to have a lot of open loop gain. That allows negative feedback, a lot of headroom, to do its job, clean up the distortion. So we need that huge amount increase in gain over that smaller amount of distortion increase but it's you know this is still not that great I want to see if I can improve that one thing I must mention I've been running this at plus and minus 15 volts you know the complete circuits gonna run at 32 35 volts plus and minus so if I adjust my power supply so its voltage is now at plus or minus 32 volts. Look what happened there. It actually reduced that distortion. Now we got to uh, pull this back a little bit. Oops. So we're not going off screen. So that really pulled back that distortion running it at the supply voltage that it's going to be using. Okay, I did one more change to the circuit. I added an additional transistor in the current source. It doesn't really affect the operation. Whoops, meter turned off. It doesn't really affect the operation of the circuit much. Mainly the reason I did this is because if I actually build the circuit, I would use a Zener diode here. However, the price of a Zener diode is more than one of these KSC1845 transistors. In quantity of like 10, I can get these transistors at DigiKey for about 25 cents. And a Zener diode in quantity would be uh, 30 some cents. So it's cheaper to do it this way. Also, it's one less different part on the bill of material. Uh, this current source actually performs better than using the LED or a Zener diode but it really doesn't make much difference in this type of circuit it's not that critical so that's the reason for doing that I also change this resistor here to uh, you know get the current back to where I wanted I was running at about 1.2 milliamps I really wanted to run it at 1 milliamp not much of a difference but give a little bit more output swing. So that's really about it for the input stage. Will I actually use this stage? Pretty much. I'm going to change some values of the resistors. Uh, I'll use metal film type resistors. And hopefully I can get a hold of Bob Cordell's new amplifier book. He's supposed to be releasing a new amplifier book this month. And with that I might be able to tune up the performance of this keeping in mind that I don't want to make it any more complex than this like I said you can use a more complex current mirror and do cascading and things like that I don't really want to go any further than this you know already has six transistors and we're not done with the amplifier yet so what about using matched transistors and getting them uh, close together for thermal performance 
like on my breadboard here they're not really you know close together for thermal matching well doing so will help somewhat keep in mind that we did use emitter degeneration to remove some of the transistors parameters from the performance of the circuit however matching will help somewhat still but I'm not going to do that because for example most people are not going to buy a bag of transistors and sit down and match them matching here would help somewhat but it's not going to get you too much I think matching would be more important in the output stage where you don't have a lot of degeneration going on but then you're dealing with more expensive transistors and is somebody going to buy a bag of output transistors and sit there and match them up I want the amplifier to perform well just grabbing off-the-shelf parts and putting them in the circuit now if you wanted to spend the effort and match all the components you could gain an order of magnitude better distortion performance but like I said this amplifier will have pretty good distortion performance just as it is without worrying about matching parts at least that is the goal anyway and we will move on to the next part of this amplifier in an upcoming video thanks for watching